Let's spend just a few minutes thinking about another big topic for the UK, and that is the, the widening, growing deficit on the current account of the balance of payments. So here's how the balance of payments is constructed on the current account. Uh, there's the trade balance in blue there. That's the net balance of trading goods and services. Investment income balance, the net flows of interest, profits and dividends from external assets and liabilities. Uh, employee income balance, you might think that that chart is missing, but in fact, it's such a small net balance, just a few hundred million pounds either side. It doesn't actually appear on the chart. And then transfers in yellow, uh, that includes things like overseas aid, and uh, still the legacy effects of the UK's contributions to international organisations, including the European Union and also the United Nations and so on and so forth. Typically, uh, transfers are always negative. Investment income balance has become negative as well in recent times, uh, and the trade gap uh, has widened. It's forecast to be £100 billion in 2023. So the current account is a net figure, of course, of the trade, primary income and transfers, and it came in at £128 billion in 2022. That was an increase of more than fourfold, effectively, from 2021. So as you can see, the UK runs a big current account deficit each year. I think it was the mid-1980s, the last time we ran a significant surplus on our external account. And the forecast is it's going to, go, it's going to get even bigger, to 155 billion in 2023. Now, expressing that as a share of GDP, you can see that the forecast for 2023 is that the current account deficit will widen to 6.1% of GDP, which is a record figure in modern times. There hasn't been anything as big as that. So here we are, the UK is running a very large external account deficit, a current account deficit. Let me take a few minutes, if it's okay with you, to walk you through three possible consequences of a current account deficit. Does it matter that we're running a deficit in excess of 5-6% of GDP? Well, here are three consequences. The first one is currency weakness. So a large currency, a current account deficit, sorry, means there's a net outflow of money from the economy. Our spending on imports is greater than the value of the things we export alongside the transfers and primary income. So a big current account deficit can put downward pressure on sterling. Sterling may depreciate as a floating currency, may fall against the euro, against the US dollar and other countries' currencies. And as the currency weakens, then imports, the things we bring into the UK, the commodities, the cars, the vaccines, the TV screens, they become more expensive and that can lead to a rise in cost push inflation and also a fall in real living standards. A second consequence is weaker growth. This is because a current account deficit does represent a net outflow of demand and income from the UK's circular flow. X minus M is negative. The overall current account is in, is in, in the red. And that, of course, reduces aggregate demand and acts as a, as a negative factor, a drag on short-run economic growth, which indeed may be, may be worse, made worse by higher cost push inflation because that brings down real incomes. Now, the key thing with the current account deficit is that you need to finance it. The balance of payments always sums to zero. If you're running a current account deficit, then you need to run a financial account surplus to balance things up. So a current account deficit needs a net capital financial inflows. Now that might require a central bank to raise interest rates to attract hot money, but the central bank of the UK probably doesn't do that. We have a free floating exchange rate. There's no need to manipulate interest rates to drive the exchange rate in a particular direction. The most obvious way that the UK can finance a large current account deficit is by inflows of things like money into housing and and foreign foreign buyers of government debt or by attracting inward FTI and that could be building new factories in the UK or it could be mergers and acquisitions. So the current account deficit, does it matter? Yes. Uh, it is an important signal of a country's relative competitiveness and the fact that the UK is running such a large current account deficit should be a cause for concern. In particular, it normally reflects and implies some kind of economic imbalance. 
So, for example, the UK has got a persistent productivity gap. We don't invest as much in new capital and technology as a share of GDP. And as a country, we tend to overconsume relative to other countries. And that imbalance probably needs correcting either with a fall in the exchange rate, which might happen, or you need to address it by improving your supply side competitiveness over time. And that links, of course, to the importance of supply side policies. Now, the UK's current account deficit at the time of speaking, uh, speaking of 2023, it's rising and it's large. And it's worth going into the exam knowing it's going to be about 6% of GDP in 2023. Now, that figure is unlikely to be the outcome because the current account balances the difference between some big numbers, exports and imports, for example, and the world price of the gas we import or the oil we import or the copper, the zinc, the steel, for example, that can change. And therefore, our spending on imports is a little bit unpredictable. The UK can finance a deficit. It's not a major problem. Uh, it, it, it is for many emerging smaller countries that simply don't attract the capital to cover ex, uh, a trade deficit. Because the UK remains relatively attractive to, to financial inflows. We have very open capital markets, a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Uh, London remains a, a, a favoured venue for property investors and so on and so forth. Lots of overseas buyers of UK government debt. But... The rising corporation tax that's scheduled for April 2023 from 19 to 25 percent and the lingering, the legacy effects of leaving the European Union, the non-tariff barriers affecting exports, the fact that the UK may be coming over time less attractive for inward investment if we're outside the single market. Those policy changes, those decisions may start to bite, in which case the current account deficit will become a big issue in time to come. OK, I hope you found that useful. If you did, I'd love, if you, love it if you just press the, the like button. We never take it for granted. And maybe subscribe to the channel. Stay happy, stay curious. See you sometime soon.